to lecture two again. We have looked at the power amplifiers. We have looked at um, their characteristics. We have looked also at power efficiency. And then we have looked at the amplifiers based on their classes, the class A, the class A amplifier. We have also looked at the class B amplifier. We have also looked at the class AB amplifier, the class C, and then the class D amplifier. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is amplifier distortion, okay? Now, the term distortion, the term distortion is usually, or usually used to mean that the amplifier has a gain which depends upon the signal characteristics, okay? So, the gain depends on the signal characteristics which are which are amplitude frequency etc okay so the phenomenon or this phenomenon is described or is described as an effect which arises due to nonlinearity of the amplifier circuit okay so amplifier distortion can be caused mostly by um, incorrect biasing okay so one may ask okay so we're saying that distortion is used to mean that the amplifier has again um, has an effect which arises due to nonlinearity of the amplifier circuit now in this case what causes these distortions one of them is improper biasing number two the other one is too large input signal when the when the input signal when the input signal is too large and then the third one is nonlinearity Now, linearity would be for an ideal amplifier okay so once these things are present we would usually not or would usually have our amplifiers to have distortion because we would definitely or we don't have ideal amplifiers even though theoretically they seem to exist so here we are going to be looking at distortions in terms of of different um, um what do we call it characteristics so we're going to look at first of all amplitude distortion we'll be looking at amplitude distortion we would also look at frequency distortion and then we'll look at phase distortion phase distortion and then we'll look also at crossover distortion and then finally, we'll look at something that is used to stop crossover distortion or to resolve crossover distortion. Okay, so let's move quickly to um, amplitude distortion. Now, an amplitude distortion occurs usually when the peak values of the frequency waveform are attenuated. So for instance, you have this input signal going through an amplifier. After amplification, the peak value 
which is this side of the signal, is being attenuated, okay, causing distortion due to a shift in the kill point. An amplification may not take place over the whole signal cycle, okay, as you can see from this diagram. This nonlinearity of the output waveform um, is what we're showing here. So you see the input waveform is a complete cycle, but once it is amplified, a certain portion of the positive half cycle is what attenuated. You understand? So if the bias is correct, the output waveform should look like that of the input waveform, but only bigger. Okay, we should have the section also present. But because of improper biasing, we have a portion of the input signal taken off during amplification. If there is insufficient bias, the output waveform looks like the one on the right, like I rightly said. Okay with a negative part of the output waveform cut off. If there is too much bias, the output waveform would look like the one or the input waveform, exactly as that. Okay, all right. When the bias voltage is too small, okay, when the bias voltage is too small, What we would have is that during the negative half cycle, the transistor does not conduct fully. So the output is set by the supply voltage. When the bias voltage is too huge, the positive part of the cycle also saturates the transistor and the output drops almost to zero. So these are some of the things you should take note of. Now. Even with the correct biasing voltage level set, it is still possible for the output waveform to become distorted due to a large input signal, okay, being amplified by the circuit gain. When the input signal is too large by the system, or too large, the system will not be able to provide the voltage required. This results in distortion of the output signal. And this is what we term as clipping. So you would usually have this happening at the output. Okay. Then frequency distortion. Now this basically describes the condition where different frequencies within the amplifier is bandwidth. Okay. You know the amplifier would normally have a bandwidth okay now frequency distortion occurs when different types of frequencies within the amplifier bandwidth so this is in this case our amplifier bandwidth from 100 to about um, 50 um, thousand hertz okay from 10 to 50 kilohertz now these frequencies when amplified by different amounts will result in frequency distortion the gain of the bandwidth is no longer flat so you realize that when you start from here too much high frequency gain maximum gain and then it comes down to this and then you get them okay so the gain over the bandwidth is no longer flat and that these conditions the various frequency components of complex waves are amplified by different amounts and the waves become distorted now frequency distortion can be caused by the frequency dependent effect of reactive components that is capacitors and inductance okay so capacity 
capacitances and inductances can cause or they cause frequency distortion at large okay all right so like you can see from this diagram um this is just an illustration of frequency distortion on the response curve of an amplifier then we have phase distortion phase distortion a signal passing through the various stages of an amplifier will usually comprise of complex wave made up of different frequencies and amplitudes so let's take for instance we have an amplifier this is stage a so amplifier one amplifier two and then amplifier three now as input signal one let's see if this is input signal a okay and then this becomes b and then this becomes c and then we're expecting an output okay now sorry what happens here is that all these signals would have different frequencies and amplitudes okay the circuits may contain some reactive components such as capacitors and or inductors as well as resistors this combination of components may change the amplitude of individual waves at different frequencies okay so a further property of this circuit is that they also change the phase of the waves at different frequencies an individual frequency component of the complex wave having its face is shifted by 180 degrees will convert a negative feedback amplifier into a positive feedback amplifier so once you have the amplifier signal having a phase shift because of these distortions you can have a positive amplifier becoming what a negative amplifier at particular frequencies and cause severe instability if the phase change effect is less than this shifting the phase of some of the component waves or harmonics of the complex signal can have effect on changing the shape of the signal wave and so cause distortion okay all right now let's look at one last type of distortion which is the crossover distortion okay the crossover distortion now if you recall you remember this diagram which is the push-pull amplifier with priv with pre biasing since no bias is applied to the transistor the incoming voltage has to rise above 0 0.7 volts which you all know why to overcome the potential barrier okay of the base emitter junction because of this no current flows through tr1 which is the npn transistor when the signal is less than 0 0.7 volts this action is similar on the other half okay so no current flows through the tr2 until ac input voltage is more negative than 0 0.7 volts so for this reason if no bias is applied to the transistor the output of a class b amplifier or a class b push-pull amplifier would look like what you have in this diagram okay because clipping between half cycles okay the output is distorted since the clipping occurs between the time one transistor cuts off and the other one comes on we call it crossover um, distortion 
So you realize that at a positive half cycle, you have one transistor conducting. Now, the distortion occurs between when one transistor cuts off and the other transistor is also coming on. Okay, and this is what we call the crossover distortion. This happens. So here, the distortion is represented at this point. Okay, now to eliminate this crossover distortion, we need to apply a slightly forward bias to each emitter diode. And with that, we call it pre-biasing the output. Okay, so here, pre-biasing the output would mean that we would pre-bias the output signal. So in this diagram, you realize that this looks more of a different diagram than the previous one we saw in the previous lecture. So the problem of crossover can be reduced considerably by applying a slightly forward biased voltage to the basis of the two um, transistors by using a pair of diodes, okay? By using this, these diodes to help us forward bias the transistors. Now, this type of resistor biasing, okay, okay, causes one transistor, sorry, this type of transistor biasing causes one transistor to turn on exactly at the same time as the other transistor turns off. As both transistors are now biased, slightly above the original cutoff point. The pre-biasing voltage has the effect of moving the amplifier's kill point past the original cutoff point, thus allowing each transistor to operate within its active region for slightly more than half or 180 degrees of each half cycle. In other words, 180 degrees plus bias the amount of diode biasing, okay, voltage present at the base terminal of that transistor can be increased in multiples by adding additional diodes in series. Okay, so this is how we solve um, the crossover distortion. So this brings us to the end of um, the second part of lecture two, which is distortion or amplifier distortion.